guys, my name is Jessie Mew and welcome back to Taito Ecology. I am so very excited to share with you guys the very first bit of DLC that has come out for the game just earlier today. This is the Himalayan Mountains. Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> it's very different from the grasslands biome that we've grown to know and love with all of these rolling hills dusted with bits of snow. I think it might be a bit bigger too. It's um, hard to tell, but it seems like it goes back a lot further than um, the grasslands biome does. So it seems like we're going to have a lot more room to work with, which is very good. Because um, as far as I've seen, there are um, quite a few large animals that we're going to be able to uh, take a look at as we adventure through the Himalayas. So why don't we uh, take a look at all of the things that we can unlock here? <laughs> there are a ton of different plants and animals and all sorts of things. And they're so beautiful and colorful too. We have a joint fur, maidenhair ferns, Himalayan fairy grass, rhododendrons, blue poppies, goji bamboo. <laughs> that's going to be interesting. I wonder if that's going to be a little bit hard to handle. Pomegranates, Himalayan balsam, Himalayan honeysuckle, Himalayan birch, wood apples, banj oak, I believe, and deodar cedars. <laughs> and as for the animals, which really excites me, we of course have our moths and our ants, which we recognize from our grasslands biome, but we also have these adorable little pikas, I believe. I want to say pikas <laughs> after Pikachu, but I'm pretty sure that's not how you pronounce that. Um, then we have our red foxes, which seem to have a different texture for um, this biome than the red foxes that we've placed in our grasslands biome, and they are gorgeous, aren't they? <laughs> we also have marmots, green hawk moths, red pandas, which probably are the star of the show here. These red pandas are adorable. <laughs> I can't wait to add these to the biome. Um, what is this? Chevrotane, maybe? A Paris peacock butterfly. Those are beautiful too. Snow leopards. Oh my gosh. Muntjacks, doles, musk deer, Chinese pangolin, gray wolves. <laughs> they have a different texture to um, this biome as well. And they are beautiful. I really like this. I can't wait to bring in yet another wolf pack to one of our biomes. That is going to be a lot of fun. The Asian black bear, which is also gorgeous. Honestly, all of these are gorgeous. <laughs> the Bengal tiger, the one-horned rhino, and the Asian elephant. Oh my gosh, that's probably going to be a, a very interesting thing to add to the biome. Kind of like the bison that we just recently added to the grasslands. So, okay guys, <laughs> I guess we better get started here. This is going to be very, very interesting. The first thing, of course, that we need to do is uh, place down our grass. So we'll have to bring out our producers. And oh my gosh, I forgot to check our decomposers too. We actually have a brand new decomposer, the stag beetle. I believe um, all we had to work with in the grasslands biome were our mushrooms and earthworms. So this is going to be interesting. Something a little bit new to <laughs> spruce up the place to uh, help de take care of all the detritus levels that I'm sure we're going to need to um, control, especially if it's a larger biome. It might be a little bit harder to keep those under check, but for now we have some joint fur plants that we can place around um, the biome here. These lovely little joint furs. <laughs> and also some maidenhair ferns. So I want to make sure that we have plenty of different types of grass um, and plants for our herbivores to eat before we uh, decide to place those into the biome. Our little uh, pika are going to probably munch on all of this stuff as soon as we introduce them. They are currently the only new creatures that are unlocked at the moment, I think. I'm just going to uh, take a quick peek at that if we scroll down here. All of the others need to be unlocked, including the red fox, though it only costs one title coin, so I don't think we're going to have a problem with that. <laughs> the um, pikas are the only little creatures that um, we can place in here at the moment. The new ones, anyway. We also, of course, have our ants and our moths, but we are very used to those. They're very important, but we're uh, quite used to how they work, so we don't need to uh, worry about that too much at the moment. And it seems like they also changed up the way that the plants are placed. They um, spawn in different types of clumps all around, so it, it spruces up the place. It looks a little bit different every single time, and I'm very glad to see that. <laughs> it makes everything just a little bit more interesting, in my opinion. Let's uh, zoom down a little bit here so we can take a closer look at all of these gorgeous plants. <laughs> these are our joint furs, I believe. 
and then um, our maiden hair ferns, which are also quite nice. <laughs> the whole place is just gorgeous. There's so many mountains here, all just uh, capped with a little bit of snow. I am really impressed with um, the artwork in this one so far, and I can't wait to see all of these little creatures that we're going to introduce. So why don't we bring in one of these pikas? I guess we'll have to cross our fingers that um, <laughs> they don't munch on all of the plants that we just placed. But let's put them right here on the top of the snow-covered hill, and then let's X out of here so we can uh, go down and take a look at our very first creatures in our Himalayan biome. <laughs> look at these guys. They are on the march. They are ready to take the world by storm. Um, let's hope that they don't become the second deer mice <laughs> of this game. Let's hope that they don't become the deer mice of the um, Himalayan biome because that would be a little bit unfortunate. We're currently having a bit of trouble in the grasslands <laughs> with our deer mice. We will be visiting the grasslands again, so don't worry about that. We will definitely um, be visiting that very soon. I think we'll probably alternate between the Himalayan biome and the grassland biome as we uh, continue on because it'll, it'll be something different to look into, something to uh, shake things up just a little bit. So let's add some of our insects around too, some moths so they can pollinate all of the plants that we're about to place down and help them uh, spread around the biome. We'll have to get in the far corners too because uh, this place is so big. <laughs> and I think I think we should probably place down some more plants as well. Um, have they munched on any of these yet? Any of these big groups of plants? I hope so. Maybe we should read about them a little bit um, to make sure that they'll properly have any sort of food that they need. Um, does the biodex button work? There it goes. <laughs> it works just fine now. So their diet. Pikas are herbivores who eat a variety of grasses, seeds, and other greens. And for predators, because of their small size, pikas are prey to many animals like leopards, of course. <laughs> I can see that. I can definitely see that, but I'm kind of surprised that they're not uh, going out to eat. It seems like their hunger's going down. I'm sure eventually they'll go um, over to all of the different plants that we place down and they'll munch on those, but maybe for now we should think about unlocking some different types of plants in here because they look so beautiful. Look at these. They are so colorful. Um, we have Himalayan fairy grass. I think I'll unlock that first and we'll see how that looks in this biome. Um, it looks like it's probably... Um, not blooming at the moment because it'll need to be pollinated or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they are blooming. We just need to get down there and really look at it. There we go. Those are very, very nice. They'll definitely give us a little splash of color in the biome as we continue along. So we'll add a couple more of those in while we're here. <laughs> a nice little group of Himalayan fairy grass, which is very beautiful. I do wonder if the animals can climb up on these uh, little cliff sides though. I'm curious if we place anything up there if it's going to be inaccessible to the animals or if they will still find a way to climb up there. I guess uh, we'll find out in the future if that's the case or not because it doesn't really look like there's many slopes for them to go up naturally. So I wonder if uh, they can climb now. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see. Um, I think I'd like to unlock this rhododendron too because that looks really nice and it's only 20 Taito coins and uh, we have collected quite a few from the grasslands biome in the past. So let's place some rhododendrons around. Oh gosh, that's going to be really nice. Look at that. Look at this here. That is gorgeous. Oh, and we got some Taito coins already. <laughs> that's always good to see some six, uh, six little Taito coins for us. This is really nice. Oh my gosh, I really like this. <laughs> the um, artwork has definitely been, I guess, uh, ramped up since the previous biome. So I really enjoy um, this new art style that they have going. It is gorgeous. We'll place down another rhododendron right here. They cost uh, quite a bit of energy to place down, but it's understandable because they are quite large compared to the other little bunches of grass and plants that we've planted around the area. And hopefully our pikas are doing well now. I think they are. Yeah, it seems like they're probably eating, so they're okay. Um, <laughs> again, I really hope they're not going to go just totally crazy, out of control, like um, our deer mice in the previous biome that we were playing in. And in fact, we probably should consider Consider unlocking some red foxes so we don't have to worry about that much longer <laughs> because uh well I know our red foxes are going to eat them very quickly but I guess if we place maybe this marmot down as well 
maybe that will uh, balance things out a little bit better. So I'm going to place the red fox back here by um, this little cliffside. <laughs> and we have to go see them too with their brand new textures. See how these guys look. Oh my goodness, they are like legit fluffy big bushy red foxes. Oh my gosh. These guys, they are gorgeous. <laughs> and of course, they are already on the move. They are not wasting any time to go find those little pikas that are currently uh, roaming through the grasses. Actually, where are they? I haven't seen them in quite a while. <laughs> they all kind of marched off in their own directions. It looks like there might be one down here. I think so. There he is. Hello, little guy. He is adorable. Oh. <laughs> Oh, my heart is melting right now. These creatures are just so beautiful. And hopefully they can reach the pikas. I didn't think about that. Their um, territory, I'm not sure if it's because this biome is so much bigger that um, it's harder to tell, but it seems like their territory might be a little bit smaller than it was in the grasslands. I'm not 100% sure. It, again, it might just be like an optical illusion because this place is so much bigger than the grasslands was. So let's see. We should probably unlock this marmot too. I think that would be a good idea and we'll read up on them as well. Maybe we should also take a quick peek in um, the the red foxes biodex as well. <laughs> we have to put the marmots on this side though so the red foxes can um, actually reach them and I know it's locked I'm sorry I didn't mean to back into it so let's take a look at these marmots we can zoom down a little bit lower than we were able to before as well so it makes it a little bit easier to take pictures of these uh, smaller creatures and oh my goodness <laughs> how cute is this guy oh my gosh they almost look like beavers or something that is so cute Okay, so marmots. Let's read about these guys. Marmots enjoy all sorts of soft plants, grasses, and fruits. Okay, so soft plants. We have to make sure we have lots of soft plants <laughs> for our marmots and predators. Wolves, snow leopards, and bears all prey on marmots. In colonies, marmots will keep watch for predators and they'll alert other marmots with a brief alarm call that lasts less than 80 milliseconds at a low frequency. Okay, that is a very, very short alarm, isn't it? Okay, so hopefully they'll be able to eat all of this um, Himalayan fairy grass. I have a feeling they probably will be able to. And in fact, we might want to uh, place a little bit more down for them. So they'll have even more to munch on as they enjoy their time. And uh-oh, it looks like that fox might be going after this guy. Is he going to catch him? Oh, yes. <laughs> he just fell right down. Oh my goodness, so we have one dead marmot at the moment, unfortunately, but our fox is gorgeous <laughs> as the marmot turns into a carcass right before our eyes. That was a little bit less gorgeous, but um, it's life, I guess. That's just the way of life. So let's continue placing some fairy grass around here for them to eat. We have plenty of grass here. I don't think they'll have any trouble uh, getting their meals, though it looks like this guy is eating quite a bit right now. <laughs> and now he's going to sleep in the grass right after he uh, filled up his belly. Now I wonder if we should place another territory of marmots in here just in case. I have a feeling that our foxes will definitely be able to control them in the month ahead. So um, I don't think that's going to be a problem. We'll just add another group of marmots over here uh, in a place where they can both interact because why not? <laughs> we want them to be nice and close together. And how are our pikas doing? Let's see, there's still six out of eight, so I don't think we have to worry about those at the moment. It seems like the foxes are more concerned with these larger creatures, which makes sense. It's a larger meal, and uh, they probably don't want to waste their time with the smaller ones at the moment. Let's add um, a couple more moths in, and of course, our decomposers. We always need to have decomposers in the area, so um, we don't need to worry about the detritus levels. We will get a whole bunch of mushrooms in here and some earthworms too, and then maybe we should unlock the stag beetle. We certainly have enough title coins to do so, and I would like to uh, see how they uh, how they change up the biome. <laughs> Definitely, since they are brand new decomposer in the game, we might as well see what they do. So let's unlock that right now, and um, that'll be the next thing that we place down as soon as we have enough energy. I think I will place them um, over by our foxes, because why not? <laughs> so let's see what these guys look like. Can we even see them? There they are. A little, um, I think, is that a log? I think that's a log. So the uh, <laughs> the stag beetles live inside this log. I can see them crawling on the top. Oh, look at that. 
Look at that. We can zoom in really close on these guys too. That is kind of creepy. <laughs> I am certainly not a fan of insects in uh, by any means. I don't like insects at all. I certainly don't like big stag beetles, but um, I can appreciate them in this game at least. <laughs> they add a nice little touch to the biome that we would not have had otherwise. So let's place some earthworms down by our rhododendrons too, because I think that would probably be a good place to uh, keep them. And that should probably hold over the biome as far as detritus levels go for the coming month. Um, but I would like to unlock this blue poppy too. I realize we're unlocking a lot of stuff in this episode, but um, I, I'm just so excited <laughs> to try out all of these things. I cannot wait to see some of the larger creatures in this DLC pack. It is going to be so much fun to play around with them, especially the tigers and the elephants. I absolutely cannot wait to see what that's going to be like. Um, but we got some more title coins, so that's always good. <laughs> Even though we're unlocking so much, we're also getting quite a bit back, so I'm always glad to see that. And look at these blue poppies! Look at these! They are so beautiful! Oh my goodness, this biome is probably going to be a lot more colorful than um, our grasslands biome, which I am very, very happy to see. <laughs> so let's add a whole bunch of blue poppies in here so they can spruce the place up just a little bit more. And our fox has a nice little field of flowers to run in as well. <laughs> oh my goodness, guys. I am so happy with the way that the biome is turning out so far. We have um, just done a little bit, and yet it's already so much more colorful than it was before. We have our lovely group of pikas over here. We have some marmots, two groups of marmots, in fact. So hopefully they'll be able to survive the uh, month ahead. I'm going to quickly make sure that we are passing a whole month in the biome <laughs> while we're gone. We definitely want this entire month to pass because um, it'll be a little bit easier as far as collecting um, title coins if we allow more time to pass while we're gone. So that should be interesting to see. I think we'll end out the episode here. We'll just zoom in on this little fox who's currently sleeping all nice in the flowers <laughs> with a marmot, in fact. I don't know if that's the best place to sleep, right next to our little fox friend. It seems like that might be um a little bit dangerous, but the fox isn't concerned with the marmot, so I guess he gets to live another day. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you are just as excited about this new DLC pack as I am, and I will be leaving a link in the description below if this is something that you would like to try out as well. So I will see you guys all in the next episode. Bye!